Speakers, publishers, consultants, coaches, and info marketers unite. The Speaking of Wealth Show is your roadmap to success and significance. Learn the latest tools, technologies, and tactics to get more bookings, sell more products, and attract more clients. If you're looking to increase your direct response sales, create a big time personal brand, and become the go to guru, the Speaking of Wealth Show is for you. Here's your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to the Speaking of Wealth Show. This is your host, Jason Hartman, where we discuss profit strategies for speakers, publishers, authors, consultants, coaches, info marketers, and just go over a whole bunch of exciting things that you can use to increase your business, to make your business more successful and more and more passive and more and more automated and more and more scalable. So we will be back with a great interview. Be sure to visit us at speakingofwealth.com. You can take advantage of our blog, subscribe to the RSS feed, and many other resources for free at speakingofwealth.com. And we will be back with a great interview for you in less than 60 seconds. What's great about the shows you'll find on jasonhartman.com is that if you want to learn about investing in and managing income properties for college students, there's a show for that. If you want to learn how to get noticed online and in social media, there's a show for that. If you want to know how to save on life's largest expense, there's a show for that. And if you'd like to know about America's crime of the century, there's even a show for that. Yep, there's a show for just about anything, only from jasonhartman.com. Or type in Jason Hartman in the iTunes store. My pleasure to welcome Allison Groves to the show. She was a speaker at Blog World, and I'm glad to have her here today to talk about link building, the best marketing strategy you've never heard of. So, Allison, welcome. How are you? I'm good, Jason. Thanks for having me. Good, good. Now, you're a project coordinator with Raven Internet Marketing Tools, and I guess your specialty is link building, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess it used to be my specialty. Uh, We were actually uh, a digital agency specializing in SEO and link building and social media and I built these this platform that we have today kind of in-house to use ourselves and actually stop doing the agency side of, of things and are strictly focused on the software now but we still kind of kept the um, obviously kept the passion for sort of the core marketing or internet marketing tactics out there so and link building is one of them and so that's kind of where we are today but um, we still love it we don't get to do it as much physically as we used to do but um, we still love talking about it and um, and kind of helping people figure link building out. Maybe just for those who may not know, I'm sure everybody's heard the term, but explain what link building is and let's talk about the the strategy nobody's heard of. (laughs) Well, that's the thing. Um, We've discovered, you know, as we've gotten deeper into talking with marketing agencies and people who, you know, do marketing, but maybe don't, aren't familiar with SEO, so to speak, the term link building is kind of goes right over their heads. So we've actually worked really hard recently and, and maybe, you know, bringing more attention to this or maybe even, you know, changing the phrase, so to speak. But essentially, it's literally PR and you are going out there, you're finding relevant websites to whatever it is, your product, your service, whether that service is, you know, something that you offer or or even yourself, like a consultant or something like that, and saying, you know, these are relevant websites. They're going to bring me relevant traffic. So I'm going to reach out to them and see if they would be interested in writing, you know, anything from writing a review to having you guest blog for them. You know, there's a whole gamut of things there. But people don't really think of that as link building or maybe even think about that PR tactic to use themselves, but it's extremely powerful. And if you devote a little bit of time to it, it's something that just about anyone can do and can bring so much attention to whatever they're trying to promote. So is link building, is there something you want to distinguish between link building and backlinks? Yeah, I mean, link building is the actual act of acquiring that backlink. So backlinks, for those people who don't know, are any sort of 
link that exists out there on the web that points to your website. So let's say uh, our website is raventools.com. If we had a link on your website, for example, that pointed to raventools.com, that would be a backlink. But it's the acquiring of that backlink that is basically the basis of, of link building itself. So there are, you know, a bunch of groups out there that offer these link exchange services. And I've always thought that those probably don't work because websites that just throw a bunch of links on them, I mean, I can't imagine Google's very favorable to websites like that. Now, links with content, you know, like guest blog posts and so forth, that's, of course, different and I'd say more legit, if you will. But what do you think of the link exchange networks? Well, about you know, five, eight years ago, that was a much more acceptable practice and was what a lot of link builders actually did. But as Google has sort of really put the stop to that. Right. In other words, they've done a better job of like weeding stuff out and, and getting rid of sort of the internet BS. I mean, it's still there for, for sure, but there's less of it than there used to be in the old days. Right, right, right. And I think recently, you know, maybe you can link to this or something, but the, the whole JCPenney debacle that came up in the holidays. And basically what JCPenney was doing was going out and purchasing thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of links on really, really low quality websites. So basically it would be like someone set up a website, you know, a blog or whatever you want to call it. And JCPenney would go out and buy these links. And sometimes they would even hide them. Like they would put white text on a white background. Oh gosh, that's so, that's that so sort of old stuff. hat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To, um, to essentially, you know, because in the old days, Google would say, well, this website has millions of links pointing to it. So therefore, it must be highly authoritative. So let's bump that up in search. Well, they're hip to that now. And JCPenney was busted for it, amongst other people. And yeah, so well, now... Let, let's talk about that JCPenney thing just sure. for a moment before you go on. So JCPenney, when you say they were busted for it, did Google take them out of search? I know that was a big scandal, but I didn't have time to really follow that story. I did I did see it. Or did they just downgrade them? Or or what, what, what was the sort of the punishment, if you will, for JCPenney? And I'll bet some heads rolled over that. <laughs> over, I'm sure they did, and I JCPenney. bet it was probably. And you know, I, I have would have to go back and refresh myself on the on the absolute details. But I'm betting it was an agency, or it could have been in house. Uh, some you know, someone was responsible for it. And I want to say that at the very beginning, or when they were first found out, they were just gone from search. And this was during the holidays. Win, and they were winning, you know, the search battle on really, really short tail keywords like betting and, um, you know, anything home oriented. Yeah, pants. Um, and they were winning <laughs> right. that battle. Yeah, right. Kitchen dishes or right. whatever Jay Z Penny sells, shirts, pants. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, yeah. Short tail is usually. That's suspicious if you'd win on such short tail words like that, or at least many of them. Okay, so what what else were you going to say after I sort of interrupted you about the JCPenney scandal? I don't know other than uh, it, it was bad. And yeah, it was bad. And so basically now the prevalent thought is, okay, well, that was kind of, JCPenney was kind of the poster child for the old way of life as far as acquiring links is concerned. And now, you know, the way that you really want to go about it is organically and putting your nose to the grindstone, doing a lot of hard work, but you, you know, to acquire those much fewer, you know, you're not going to acquire in the thousands. I, I'm talking like in the tens of links from websites that are high authoritative, but in your niche and what websites that are going to be applicable to what you're doing. So that is the kind of the new world, whereas, you know, again, the JCPenney example was that was the old way we did things. We just would buy links or acquire links by the thousands. But that is no longer ex an acceptable tactic today. Yeah, right, right. So wh what what is the story? I mean, you know, Allison, you say put your nose to the grindstone and hard work. That's not really what anyone wants to hear. Everybody's looking for, you know, sort of the magic answer or the panacea, the the, the magic thing that's just going to bring them traffic and, and customers. I suppose you're going to say blogging, guest blogging. Mm -hmm. 
Go ahead, though. What is the, the best secret you've never heard of? <laughs> well, it's, it's really kind of connecting the dots, right? So uh, I keep mentioning finding these sort of high authoritative websites that are applicable to whatever it is you're doing. So again, before we even get into the link building part of it, the, the kind of crux of the issue is having a great product or service that you're, you know, you're offering and you want to bring more attention to it. Well, you know, the next step would be, all right, well, now I got to go out and do a little bit of research or a lot of research, you know, you, it's, again, it's not, it's not hard, it's just tedious, and you really kind of have to put a lot of effort into it, but you find those high authoritative websites that are in your same area, and then you kind of start that process of building a relationship with these websites, and so that's, you know, social media is extremely great for that, but all of these things, you know, and once you build that relationship, then maybe you can acquire the link either by, you know, hundreds of things, reviews, guest blogging, et cetera. Um, but it's connecting those dots, I think, that a lot of people aren't really all that familiar with. I bet people kind of un understand the concepts separately, but connecting the dots and saying, I'm going to find these websites, I'm going to build relationships with these people, and it's going to be a win-win situation because that website is getting great content, I'm getting the link back, also the promotion, you know, it's that's the thing that I think that a lot of people outside of the SEO world still um, are having trouble kind of connecting the dots there. So it's it's a matter of connecting those dots and good old fashioned relationships, but how can you scale that up? I mean, maybe you don't want to do anything black hat, obviously, like J.C. Penney did, and and get in trouble for it. Which which, by the way, brings up another point I'd just like to discuss with you, maybe after this salvo, is that it's a little scary that Google sort of just regulates so much of who the winners and losers will be philosophical issue there, but I'd maybe just like to touch on that. But, you know, without doing that, how do you scale this up and ramp it up a, get, a bit? I mean, you have to write individual separate blogs for each site you're guest blogging. Can you use the same blog on many different sites? Or are you going to get downgraded for duplicate content? You know, address some of those issues on, on scalability. Yeah, you know, that's the, going to be and will continue to be the toughest issue. I know, again, when we were doing that from the agency side of things, I was be building links for a particular client of ours. And, you know, it would only be 20 or 30 a month, maybe. And that was considered a really good month because the amount of work that is required to do it from the research to the creating of the content to the relationship building and all those things that need to happen. So scaling almost becomes a personnel issue. You know, if, if you can't buy the links anymore and you shouldn't buy the links anymore and you, and the whole goal is to really truly create meaningful links and relationships and all the things that come with that. Unfortunately, uh, unless you just stop, sleeping, scaling really only happens on a, on a personnel level. And that makes it even more difficult. But that's some of the things that we actually address in, in our um, software is kind of helping people scale that, um, which truly means people. So more people working on the same project together. Um, and, you know, we're trying to help solve some of those issues that come along with that. But yeah, scalability is a huge thing. And the only thing that I think that truly works with that is just adding more bodies to it. Well, another philosophical comment is that one of the sort of early promises of the internet, and you know, it ex it still exists to some extent, but it doesn't really exist in this part of the the internet marketing world, is that a small solopreneur could be on a more level playing field with a big business. Oh, absolutely, and I think that's why I love it so much. But not true, though, if if it's just about bodies and hiring more personnel, is it? I mean. It it is and it isn't. I say more bodies, but I also firmly believe that one person can still do a really good job with link building because, I mean, at the end of the day, it uh, it all comes down to the product that you have or that, you know, that you're trying to promote, product, service, whatever. You know, I think that we can all agree that better products are going to win out at the end of the day, you know. So if you are just, you know, you've got some slimy half done thing that you just you know you're trying to get out there and you're trying to sell people see through that so while yeah there are issues with scalability I do still firmly believe that one person can still make a great difference because they have a product that's great they love what they're doing they love connecting with other like-minded people and you can build really 
well, well done, high authoritative links that send you lots and lots of traffic and eyes on your product as one person. So while yes, scaling is an issue, I, I still, again, firmly believe that, you know, one person can really make a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I agree with you. I think they do. Hey, do you want to just address my philosophical comment about Google? If you have any thoughts on that, because as much as I would hate to say, well, we need another stupid government program that doesn't work. <laughs> but, you know, we, we have such a big monopoly here. You know, maybe what we need is an antitrust issue because Google is so large and they've just, dominated the whole internet, not just in the U.S., obviously, but globally, I guess, except in China. You know, I've heard stories about people buying websites. You know, they'll buy it as a business, as a business opportunity, sure. buy an existing website. And then they got into it after they, of course, paid the money to the seller of the, of the website. And then they realized that the website's been doing a bunch of black hat search engine things and Google has downgraded them or just completely taken them out of their search rankings. And wow, I mean, that's pretty scary. You have no real recourse, do you, if Google does that? I mean, no, you don't. But I think at the end of the day, what will end up happening is the consumers are going to end up driving the change, right? Because enough consumers are going to get, and you know, I personally have no no issue with Google. I mean, they've become what they've become because they've done they've done really good work. They've and, done a great you know, job. Yeah. It's you know, capitalism at its finest, I guess. But as more people get frustrated with these types of things, I think you'll start to see the shift. And it's not the people doing the work. I think it's the consumer that will get more frustrated and will will the consumer is going to go find information in a place that gives them the best information. If that's not Google anymore, they'll go find it somewhere else. Um, so I think that's the way that that issue may play out in the future. So who knows? The, the Internet is still such a young thing that 10 years from now, who knows who will be, you know, maybe Bing will be the big player in 10 years. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. By the way, since you mentioned Bing, well, just one more comment on the Google thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you philosophically that the consumer would go and find the information at the search engine they want to use that gives them good results, but they won't know what they don't see. And since most sure. of the world uses Google and the monopoly is so huge, the amount of habit change, the, the literally the billions of people who would have to change their habits to make an impact on Google, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Probably not even in 10 years, but I it, could be it wrong. May, it may not. I mean, I always like to think back on how quickly my, my space fell from grace. I mean, well, they had mil hundreds of millions of users and then... They got the users got a better user experience somewhere else and they went somewhere else, you know, so you just never know what can happen. Yeah, no, you don't. But, you know, since you mentioned Bing, let's talk about Bing. I mean, do you do do you cater sort of exclusively to Google with your different tools or all search engines? Oh, uh, we have data from the three main search engines. So Google, Yahoo and Bing. Google has, we, and our tools are driven a lot on by what the, what our customers want. So most of our customers use Google-based tools, so that's what we give them. But we have seen a lot of customers start to ask for more of the Bing-oriented tools, and that's because, but Bing is pretty far behind Google as far as certain certain tools, like Bing, Bing's Webmaster tools were just recently um, updated and re-released just several weeks ago, maybe six or eight weeks ago. So there is sort of a learning curve there. So we just kind of ebb and, ebb and flow with our customer base and, and in the industry and what the industry needs. So right now we're, we're heavily Google centric. I'm not sure I see that changing anytime soon, but again, if one day we wake up and someone else is in the game, then that's what, we'll, you know, we'll kind of go along with that. We're also accustomed to thinking the way we think Google's algorithms work, but nobody really knows. It's a big secret and it's constantly changing. Do other search engines work much differently though? For example, Bing, we mentioned, or is it sort of about link backs and page rank and all the sort of Google ideology we've become somewhat accustomed to? 
I think so, but I also think that it's, you know, since that changes again, well, first of all, you, you kind of nailed it. No one really knows how it works. So everyone's just kind of taking their best guess. But in the four or five years that I've been working in this particular industry, I've seen that best guess really, really, you know, kind of slide around. And now, you know, the big debate is how much do social signals play into what is coming up in search and all of these other things. And so I think that's why I've always liked to think about link building because at the end of the day, no matter where you rank for something and personalization, which is um, where, you know, if you did a search for a keyword and I did a search for a keyword, we would get two totally different results. So with all of these different factors that are playing into it and, and Google changes their algorithm like almost every hour. So there's just no, you can't keep up with it. But what you can do is continue to do your best job, put your best foot forward, promoting whatever, you know, marketing, whatever you have, promoting whatever you have. And link building is such a great thing for that because you're getting so many benefits from it. Um, it's still the prevalent thought that backlinks are a very, very high up factor in ranking. But the byproducts of it are so great. The extra promotion, the traffic, that's what makes it such a great tactic. Are there any other strategies that you want to recommend or discuss? Well, I mean, I think for for us and the way that I see the industry heading, um, again, link building is a huge part of that and always has been. But I think part of that and, again, the way that we, we kind of see the world shifting is really towards this relationship and this relationship building. And social media is such a huge part of that and has played such a huge role in sort of making it what it is today that um, I think you're going to see that more and more and more. And, you know, not necessarily having to do with social signals as they relate to your rankings, but just truly building meaningful relationships with the community that whatever it is you have is related to your customer base, whatever it may be. So you kind of start again to put those pieces together and you're looking at a really solid marketing strategy for again, whatever it is that you have. And any other thoughts that you'd like to share about the future of search or, or changing or Google's latest release or, you know, any of this broadly just in, in wrapping up here? Well, if I had those answers, I think I'd be a much richer woman. But <laughs> I think, and again, I think that's why I feel so passionate about link building is because to me that answers that question, which is, well, what's the future? Well, we, since we don't know the future and we can barely predict what's going on today, uh, as long as you kind of keep down this path of fostering meaningful relationships and uh, creating good content and building these links, then whatever the future has doesn't really matter because you are still, you're still gaining traffic, you're still gaining eyes on your product, you're still gaining fans, you're still building this community. And, you know, no matter where the internet sort of the tide of the internet ebbs and flows to, that is always going to be the core, is um, the people and building those relationships and getting those eyes to your product and marching on down that road. You know, one more thing I'd like to ask you is about how someone uses your services and maybe what the cost is, if you care to share that. Sure. So... The whole reason, again, that the service exists is because we were doing agency work and it was becoming more and more difficult for our team to all not only work together, but access data all in one place. And then most importantly, we were spending valuable billable hours uh, building reports to give to our clients. So we just had our developers start developing this software that would help us do that. And then we kind of woke up one day and realized, well, this is really helpful for people in our position. So we started marketing and selling it. And that's kind of how we got to where we are today. But we have two main price points. Uh, we've got a $99 price point for, say, the in-house internet marketer, the um, small business owner, that type of thing. And then we've got a 249 price point for agencies who need, you know, unlimited users in the system. But really, you can pull in your SEO team, you can pull in your social media team, you can pull in your PPC team all together on one platform. Everyone can work in one space. We have about 20 maybe even 21, 22 different data partners right now. So in essence, you get the access to about $900 worth of data uh, within Raven or for that 99 or 249 a month. So again, everyone can work together 
under the same, you know, in the same area, you can see what everyone's doing. And most importantly, you can create branded PDF reports that you can send off to these clients in a matter of minutes, as opposed to wasting hours or even days building these reports, which is, you know, as we know, such precious, valuable time. It, are those monthly fees? Yes. Like it's an ongoing service, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. Well, hey, give out your website if you would, Allison. Yeah, it's just raventools.com. And or if you'd like to, you can reach out to me on Twitter. Um, I'm Raven Allison with one L in my name. And uh, yeah, everything is really there. It's kind of just got a breakdown and we've got a really easy pricing chart. You can easily kind of figure out what you might need. And we also do a 30 day free trial. So you can come in, you get access to every tool on the platform for free for 30 days and can kind of decide whether or not it's going to be a good fit for you. Thanks, Allison, and you take care over in Nashville, and if you see Taylor Swift, say hello to her for me. I will do, Jason. Thank you so much. Now's your opportunity to get the Financial Freedom Report. The Financial Freedom Report provides financial self-defense in uncertain times, and it's your source for innovative, forward-thinking investment property strategies and advice. Get your newsletter subscription today. You get a digital download and even more. The price only $197. Go to jasonhartman.com to get yours today. This show is produced by the Hartman Media Company, all rights reserved. For distribution or publication rights and media interviews, please visit www.hartmanmedia.com or email media at hartmanmedia.com. Com. Nothing on this show should be considered specific personal or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own, and the host is acting on behalf of Platinum Properties Investor Network, Inc. exclusively.